The WSN cameras and crew are at Kraft Stadium tonight, right down the street from Elida High School, and we're here for Western Buckeye League football action as the Bath Wildcats are in town to play the Elida Bulldogs. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Science. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Mr. Scott Nurse. Scott, Bath not having a very good year. Elida having a great year, but it's a rival game. It's a rivalry game, and you know that both teams are going to come to play. A lot of pride. You know, they live not close, not far away from each other, so it's, it's a big game for both teams. Our keys to the game are sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this home. Scott Nurse, your keys tonight. I've got three keys tonight, Mark. Number one is score. Sounds very simple, but Elida has scored 13 touchdowns through three games, and Bath has one touchdown this year. Bath's got to find a way to score. Elida's averaging 32 points a game, and Bath is averaging 4.3. If Bath wants a chance to win tonight, they have to score. Number two, contain the Bulldogs. Elida comes in averaging over 327 yards of offense per game. Bath has to keep them contained and not let the Elida athletes get to the edge. Contain them. Pinch them to the box and then minimize the big plays. Larkin Henderson for Elida is averaging 183 total yards per game. Got to keep him contained. And then number three, compete. Big energy. Bath has to bring some emotion into the game. Play with some fire and create some big plays that can swing momentum in their favor to get that first win. It starts with the seniors. Elida cannot come into this game flat. They have to stay alert and focused and do what they've been doing to get the fourth win. Thank you very much, Scott. It's a rival game. Elida has won six of the last 10 matchups and Bath has not won on this field since the year 2008. We we'll the kickoff coming up right after this. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back at Kraft Stadium with tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency. Webb Insurance Agency is serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Our first quarter tonight is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Mark Shine and Scott Nurse. Elida won the toss. They have deferred to the second half before Bath Wildcats will get to football first. And that sun is going to be a problem for us for the next 15 or minutes or so. The Wildcats, probably a good thing, Scott, that they get the ball first. They've struggled offensive, have a freshman quarterback. Maybe it's a good thing to get the ball first. Well, and they got a change in the quarterback as well from uh, the first couple weeks. And so it'll be uh, interesting to see how they respond here early. Here's the kickoff to Lehman. Skyler Lehman will get over the 20 and about the 23-yard line where they will begin their first possession. You mentioned their quarterback. They have changed it up. The quarterback... Uh, that they've now gone to is a freshman. That would be Zach Welch. He's a 5'11", 160-pound quarterback. Last week he started against Kenton where he was 9 for 24 for just 72 yards. The leading running back for the Wildcats this year has been Skyler Lehman who just returned that kickoff. But the Wildcats have scored just a single touchdown and two field goals through the first three games. This is Lehman in the backfield along with Welch. And they go trips right as we try to get things set up here on the field. A little bit of a referees conference here yeah. at the beginning. And Officials. We're headed over to discuss things with Elida and Coach Harmon. Elida's 3-0 and uh, on the season. We can put that up on the screen for you. Let's do bath first since they are the visitors. They are 0-3. Okay, and then we can put up Elida now. They have a fine year at 3-0. and we'll Talk about their schedule and how difficult it becomes as the season progresses. And I'm not sure what it's all about. Uh, Scott, our officiating crew tonight. Yeah, our officials you tonight, go. you just got a good look there at, uh, at one of the officials. But our referee tonight is Bill Horvath and then uh, Tony DeRose is our umpire, Vince Ogier is our linesman, Barry McCullough is our side judge, and then uh, the back judge that you gotta look at there. There's Pitts to Lehman, and he will dive forward. Not much room for him on the uh, first down run. Skyder Lehman wears number 17. He is a six foot, 160 pound junior. He leads the team in rushing. 
Play call comes in from the sideline. That's brought in by Vinny Vendetta. And this Elida defense is a really good defense. They're number one in the WBL in total team defense, only giving up 213 yards a game. Second, about 11. Here's Lehman again, tries to bounce it off the right side, and he might have got back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's going to be about it. It looked like number 55, Torrey Thomas, was in on the tackle there. So we're going to go to third and 10 from the 23-yard uh, line. Opening drive. Trying to view our monitor on the field through this sunlight that's streaming in right now. If that drops, it'll drop the temperature too. Wildcats go trips left, and that's the direction of Welsh will roll. Looks, looks, and he's going to get sacked in the backfield. Well, he had nowhere to go, and, and probably a smart decision to eat the football right there. None of the receivers were open. Good job by the Elida secondary in coverage. So it's a five-yard loss back to the 18. Zach Welch is also the punter. He averages just 30 yards per punt this season. He's punted 15 times through the first three football games. You can see his protector there is Lehman. And deep for Elida. I'm trying to catch a number in a bright sunlight, Scott, and I cannot. I'll try to catch that. Here's Lehman's, or here's uh, Welsh's punt, and it's going to be fielded and a good return. Elias going to get the football in great field position. Wildcats had the football for just over two minutes. And Elida takes over already deep in Bath territory at the 36 yard line. Yeah, it looked like that was number three, David Etzcorn. Uh, nice job in coming up and fielding that punt, not allowing it to hit, bounce, and you know, roll for another 15, 15 yards or so. Elida's quarterback is Larkin Henderson. He's a 5'10 senior having a wonderful year. He has run it for 229 yards and five scores. He's also thrown it well. We'll see what happens here on initial drive. He is alone in the backfield. It's two wing backs and two wide outs. And he hands off. Wildcats were out there first, but not a lot of room to run. That was that scoring on the wing back. Yeah, nice pursuit by the Bath linebackers there to shut that down. Just a nice little option here. You see a little trouble with the with the handoff there at the mesh point, but uh, again, good job by David Etzcorn to fight for a yard or so just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Henderson wears number five. He's a 5'10", 175-pounder. And ball's on the ground. And still being kicked around. And eventually, we're going to get a bulldog fall on it. It looks like number three. David Etzcorn was able to fall on that football and very fortunate for Elida that they're able to get this back. But, Take a look you at know, it that's again. the kind of a break that yep. Bath really needs to get them jump started. Was Etzcorn. She got all the way back now to the 33-yard line. Oh, so that's not correct. It's a 43-yard. I looked at the scoreboard. So they need to get all the way to the 26. It's third and 17. Henderson to throw, and he's going to roll right, throws it downfield. It's knocked away on a good defensive play that time. The ball was knocked away by Preston Young, and the ball falls incomplete, and we'll see what Elida chooses to do on fourth down. Yeah, Preston's a six-foot, 160-pound sophomore. Nice job, perfect position, reached in with that inside hand and batted the ball down. So Elida after having really good field positions, going to punt and try to pin the Wildcats back. There's a snap, and it's away. And unlike Elida, who fielded the ball, Bath could not. That's going to end up being a really good punt. Boy, Mark, we need these oak trees on the other side of the field to grow just yeah. a little bit taller. Yeah, we do. Because, uh, man, we're looking right into the sun right now. It's really difficult. Well, that football was punted extremely well, and it ended up all the way back. 
Koval punted the football all the way back on the, I think the scoreboard says one yard line. Yeah, excellent job by the Elida punt team. And certainly for a Wildcat offense, which has uh, struggled to move the football all season and on the first possession, not a good spot to be in. Well, they got some size on the Bath offensive line. They need to use it right now and get a little push. Well, speaking of push, the Wildcats went to the Wildcat formation. Kane Sullivan came in. He had been the quarterback earlier in the year. And, uh, yeah, and he's definitely a running threat, very athletic. But that offensive line for Bath, big boys up there, Boston Cheney is at tackle, Corey Slot, Cade Price is the center, Quentin Collins and Tyshawn Davis tackle. There's some big boys up front. So second down for the Wildcats. Football's on the five yard line, so they picked up three on first down. Sullivan stays in at quarterback. And handoff on the counter, and not much room to run that time. Gets over the five yard line, perhaps. Well, at least they're getting a little breathing room there. And Sullivan stays in the game as quarterback, I think probably because of some experience. Uh, when you're that close to your goal line, you're backed up that far, it's probably good to have an experienced quarterback in there who can, uh, you know, ensure that uh, you don't end up on the wrong side of that line. Well, that was Mikey Hale who carried that time. Mikey has the only touchdown run for the Wildcats this season. And they are facing a third down. And five from the six. Sullivan still in the quarterback. And he will look to throw. Quick out, and he threw it before his receiver was ready to catch the football. Vinny Vendetta, and that will fall incomplete. And the Wildcats could well be heading to punt formation once again. And Vendetta was open. He, he was. He, he was definitely open, had a little cushion. Glad defender was giving him that corner, was giving him a little cushion, and uh, just a misthrown football. In fact, the pass was a little bit early. It, it was actually thrown before he was uh, prepared to turn and catch it. And so Welsh will punt again. He's about five yards deep in his own end zone. See if they come at him. A little rugby style punt. And that's gonna hit and bounce. This is Etzcorn. And he's got another good run back. And once again, Elida is gonna test the bath defense. Yeah, I like Etzcorn's aggressiveness on these first two punts that we've seen. He's been very aggressive to come up and make the catch and, and try to advance it and done a good job so far. So the Wildcat defense plus the fumble gave Elida a good field position the first possession. They're going to get it back an even better field position this time all the way down to the Wildcat 27-yard line. Henderson in the backfield along with him is Tyler Carter, who wears number four. This is Carter. And he will go down right about the line of scrimmage. Tyler Carter, 89 yards rushing on the season. He averages four yards every time he touches the football. There you can see it again on Fat Jack's replay. Yeah, there wasn't much there. The Elida, the Elida front uh, four offensively could not find a seam. Actually, the scoreboard says he lost a yard, so we'll move him back to the 28. You know, it looks like it's just right about the down box on the far side of the field. Bath in a 4-3 defense. Carter stays in, marking Henderson to throw. Throws it over the middle, and it's batted away. Good defensive play by the Wildcats. It looks like Welsh got his hands on that one. Yeah, it looks like number 17. Skyler Lehman was in there as well. You're right, it was Lehman, and he knocked the ball away. Then Welch went for the hit, and we go to third and 10 from the 28. Well thrown football, though. It was, yeah. Tyler Carter stays in the backfield with Larkin Henderson. Single receiver to the right, two to the left. Got a screen set up, throws it out this way. It's caught. Carter up the sideline he goes. He gets knocked down inside the 20. So let's see if it's a first down. It's going to be close. And we're looking to see what the mark is on the far side of the field. It is a first down. Our first downs today are sponsored by the Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. 
I really like how Tyler Carter looked that football into his hands. You could see his hands and fingers were spread, and uh, he caught the ball with his hand, not with his forearm or his, his uh, pads, but with his hands. High snap, Henderson tracks it down, gets inside the 15 to about the 13. Arkin Henderson has rushed for 229 yards and six scores this year. He's thrown 45 passes and completed 24 of them, 26 of them, three interceptions, 320 yards, and four scores for this potent offense. Got a lot of weapons. The ball's on the 13-yard line. Second down. Yeah, Larkin Henderson, definitely a dual threat, Mark. You mentioned he's, he's uh, at the top of the leaderboard in the WBL um, in both rushing and passing. So he's in that top 10. And what do we get? We get a... Timeout. It will be a timeout bath. Our timeouts tonight. They are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment. You're watching High School Football on WSA. Tonight's just a replay sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Wildcats take a timeout. Elida, second and eight from the Wildcat 13-yard line. Henderson in the backfield along with Tyler Carter. Carter goes into a wingback position. And Henderson will roll right and keep and steps inside, gets to the 10 and gets whacked pretty good as he gets to about the seven or eight-yard line. Well, he's dangerous in this red zone, Mark. He's got 10 of the 13 touchdowns that Elida has this year. Six rushing, four passing, and uh, when it gets in the red zone, you've got to really key on him and focus on him. Ball's inside the nine yard line, almost to the eight where it's third down. They need to get to the five for a first down. Two receivers left, single receiver right. Henderson and Carter in the backfield. Henderson will look right, pump fake throw, it's caught. And bouncing off a tackler and trying to get to the end zone. Cobalt is the one who caught that ball. Jackson has caught 10 balls for 103 yards and a score this year. And that's gonna be a first down. That will be a Union Bank first down. And they've got it down to the two yard line on what will become the seventh play of this drive. An excellent throw by Henderson under duress. A different running mate in the backfield with him now. Brady Kirk is in there. Brady scored twice on the ground this year. And we'll get this handoff and runs right through a Wildcat. Ball's loose and the Wildcats get it back. So I'm about to go in for a score, Scott, and they fumble. Well, that's a huge play, and that's that momentum swing we talked about. You know, a little bit of fire that you can get from something like this. You feel like Elida is about to go in and score. Just a great hit. Heads up, and the ball comes loose. Bass able to recover. Big collision, looking to see who might have come up with the football. And they couldn't catch a number in the pile up there, but the ball is on the one, so. They stop them, but the Wildcats start with not very good field position. They've been on their own 23, their own two, and now on their own one the yard line. And they are barely outside the end zone. Might have been better if they recovered it in the end zone. Well, <laughs> I've obviously got to jump on it wherever you can, but they're in a, a difficult spot here. It's like Sullivan will stay in his quarterback. And Sullivan will run right. And he gets out of the end zone. Well, that's the same play they ran last series on first down, just trying to get out. Looks like he lost the football. He did. Elida has recovered. I was waiting to see. I thought it popped loose. And Elida's going to get it right back. Wow, back-to-back -back turnovers. So Elida, whose defense has been very good this evening, creates a turnover right back again on the very first play. There you can see the scramble for it. And again, we have a scrum to see who picks up the football, but from their own, from the Wildcat, four yard line this time. Yeah, it looked like number 50, Parker Krim, a freshman, 6'2", 215 pound uh, lineman, reached out with a big fist and punched that ball loose. Carter's back in the game, along with Henderson in the backfield. 
As they go two receivers to the right. Kovalt's out here along with Keaton Hawking. Under center this time. Henderson will keep it, head for the end zone. Did he get there? Big He's collision, in. he bounced into the end zone. Following the turnover, a four-yard TD run, Larkin Henderson. But that's his seventh rushing touchdown on the year, 11th touchdown uh, total. And you see here, it just follows his blockers. Nice job getting into the end zone. Elida goes up. 6-0. Our touchdowns tonight are sponsored by T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. Here's the PAT attempt. Grant Hardeman. This is Hardeman. And his kick is true, and Elida will take a 7-0 lead. A turnover and a score. You're watching high school football at WOSM. First down sponsorship tonight from the Union Bank. Bank is committed to you. Elida, Scott, you can only play with fire so long. You know, they, they had the football in the bath 36. They had the bath on the ball, uh, what, on the 28. This time they get it on the on the four and they're in. Well, and I think when you're an 0-3 team facing a 3-0 and team, you've got to capitalize on every opportunity that you get. Elida turned the football over at their own goal line. Bath needed to push it out from there and unfortunately fumbled it right back to them and really gave them a, a pretty easy path to score. Skyler Lehman will be deep to receive the kickoff. It's headed instead. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure who that is. That's 22, is that correct, Scott? Yeah, that's Keaton Vernon. Keaton Vernon it is, thank you. We're almost to the point where we'll be able to see, Scott. <laughs> Actually, it was 27. 27 is Mikey Hale, not 22. And this time, that was a one-play drive. It took just four seconds to go four yards. And this time, Bath will get a little bit better field position. They will get it on their own 30. Let's see what they can do with this. What I think this is an opportunity to get into your normal offensive sets here. You get a little bit of breathing room. You're not fighting to get out of the shadow of your own goal line like the last two possessions. Zach Welsh back in at quarterback, and he will hand off to – no, he does. Keep the ball himself. Rolls right. Welsh has got a lot of room to run, and he's going to get about four on first down to the 34-yard line. Good first down pickup, our first uh, play on first down, pick up four yards. Yeah, they got him down as 5'11", 160. Um, and, and he looks a, a little bit small out there, smaller than uh, what they had before in Sullivan, but uh, good decision-making there. Good job to read the defensive end, pull the football, on that option play and uh, picked up three or four yards. Layman's in the backfield with him again. This will be Skyder Layman. He bounces it off the left side and makes the first guy miss. He gets over the 40. Nice run by Layman. Yeah, really good vision by Layman. There was nothing up the middle where he started. He just slid to the outside, sort of followed off the tail of a couple blockers here, you see him get to the edge. That's and uh, nice run, nice finish. Picks up enough for the first down. Initial first down for the Wildcats today. Their first downs are sponsored by the Union Bank. Best play of the day for the Wildcats as they pick up seven, move it to the 41. 125 to go here in our opening quarter. Hey, we need pressure, we need pressure, hey, man, come on. Welch, Lehman in the backfield. Trips right. And the option pitch. Lehman tries to get to the corner and too much speed on the defense for Elida. Number eight is out there. That's Dominic Coli. I think 55 as well. Is that correct, Torrey Thomas? Yeah, Torrey Thomas had a couple nice plays already in this game. Just a single yard pickup on first down. Looks like that was number six also out there for Elida, Mari Wash. Very good, thank you. Wildcats send three receivers right, plus the guy in the slot. Elida in a 4-3 defense. Welsh rolls right, looks, looks, gonna throw it deep, and out here biting, fighting for it, trying to get to the football, but unable to was Vinny Vendetta, so that will fall incomplete. It will go to third and nine. Yeah, excellent coverage by Preston Young. Again, a sophomore back there, defensive back. Jackson, Jackson, but Jackson. I, I like the way that uh, Zach Welsh threw the football there. He showed, you know, strength of arm, 
was good. Threw a nice tight spiral. It was just a little bit wide. Wildcats coming in on the season. They have rushed it for 89 yards a game. They've thrown it for 96 for a total of 185.6 yards per game. But they've only been able to put 13 points on the board through the first three games. It's third and nine. Welsh will look, roll right, and throws. And his receiver slipped and trying to make a comeback to the football, but unable to as Cody Vandemark, the leading receiver for Bath on the season. 12 receptions for 143 yards, but he slipped that time and couldn't get to it. And one would think for the third time, Welsh heads to punt. Yeah, pretty good coverage out there by uh, Amari Wash, but uh, yeah, you can see the receiver just fell. Tried to get back up and make it, made a great effort at it, but just uh, wasn't able to get the reception. For the third time then, Zach Welsh will punt. Back deep, David Etzkorn. Low snap and he's gonna get it off this time. Etzkorn's gonna let it hit and this time he's gonna get a pretty good roll. So with just a few seconds left here in our opening quarter, Elida will take over. With a 7-0 lead, this time they'll have to drive it a little bit. They've got possession today on the Wildcat 36, on the Wildcat 28. They got it on the Wildcat 4 and punched it in on the first play by Henderson. Well, if you're Bath, you got to feel pretty good. A couple, couple, you know, first downs on offense, you move the sticks. He had a pretty good punt there, so Elida starts deep for once. Uh, the last, their first two possessions were on the other side of the 50. So this time it'll be Brady Kirk in the backfield along with Larkin Henderson. Brady Kirk's a 5'11", 190-pound senior. Where's number 22 for the black and orange? Henderson, quick out, caught by Keaton Hockey. Keaton is close to a first down. Let's see what the mark is. Dalton Woodruff on the tackle, number four. Uh, they're going to they, get him all the way to the 40 before he got pushed out of bounds, and that will be a Union Bank first down. Yeah, and just a nice throw by Larkin Henderson here and a good attack by number 15 for Elida Isaac Earl. That play took seven seconds, so there's six to go in the quarter. Going out of bounds, we get the clock stopped. Henderson will ride Kirk and keep it himself. Mark and Henderson will get over the 40 before the Wildcats get to him, and that brings quarter number one to an end. It's 7-0 Bulldogs. You're watching high school football on WOS. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And the Elida premier sponsor, John Stocker, his team is up. 7-0 at the end of the first quarter. Mark Shine and Scott Nurse here. And the sun has finally gotten to a point, Scott, where we can actually see the field a bit. Yeah, no question Hopefully. about it. It helps yeah. quite a bit. But you know, this Elida offense, it's third in the WBL in total yards, total offense, 327 yards a game, but second in the WBL in scoring, with averaging 32.3 points. So they're a high-powered offense. They want to get moving. Bass done, done a good job so far, really keeping them sort of in check, and really the only score – they got was on the uh, turnover. Henderson fakes to Etzcorn and is in the backfield and the Wildcats got him. Good defensive play by the Wildcats. Forces a loss. Well, we talked about that. One of the keys to the game was to contain him, contain Larkin Henderson. You got to keep him contained. Bath did a good job there, really forcing him to the back to the middle where there was help coming and he had nowhere else to go. Wildcats gave up 28 to New Bremen, 17 to Shawnee. And then they gave up six last, or 20 last week to Kenton. So the defense has not been a uh, bad, bad, I should say, Scott, for somebody who's 0-3. They've actually performed pretty well, but now we've got a penalty, I think, don't we? Yeah. It looks like they've called a personal foul face mask. Well, they'd already moved the stick, so now we're going to go to a first down on the penalty. And they take it all the way. Let's see, we're going to have a little conference about where the football actually belongs, I see. I think it's actually on the 47 of the Wildcats as we discuss this.
you like volleyball this weekend, the Kaleida Pioneer Invitational will be on Sunday night. We'll get the consolation match and the finals on for you. I think that airs at 6, I think, Scott. Yeah, they got Pioneer Days this whole yeah, weekend up they there. Do. Kaleida. Here's our schedule coming up this week. You can see this heads into our, our schedule for the, the following week coming up. This starts next Tuesday evening. Here's Henderson to throw, quick out. That's caught on the far side by Kovalt. And that ball goes to the 40 of the Wildcats. That's a seven yard pickup and we'll go to second down. Henderson put some juice on this football. You're gonna see it's a quick pass, quick out there. Puts it right where it needs to be. Excellent job, excellent play. Kovalt. Look that in again, showing good hands. Wildcats close to it pretty quickly, but not after a seven-yard pickup. Here's Kirk. And Brady Kirk runs straight ahead into the teeth of the Wildcat defense. Yeah, Brady averages almost seven yards a carry, and looks like he picked up about that many on that particular carry. I really like that play call though. You just went outside on a quick pass, quick hitter. You kind of spread the defense out a little bit and then you come back with a dive up the middle with one of your best your best running backs and uh, really nice play call mix. To the 37 yard line makes it another Union Bank first down. This will be a handoff and running wide this time with a football is Kirk and where did he step out of bounds at? Right at the 30, it looks like. Looks like that left foot. Welch on the tackle. Take a look at it again. A Fat Jacks replay. To the 29 yard line for eight. Tried to get that hand down and keep himself in bounds, but could not. Yeah, nice run. Great position to be in, second and about two. Kirk stays in the game. Henderson to throw. Fakes one. Wants to throw it deep. And it's picked off. Lehman picks that one off. Skyler Lehman steps in front of that one and picks the football off. And Bath gets the football back. Well, and that whole play was set up, though, by um, number 58, Quentin Collins. Really put some pressures, major pressure. Lehman was Unlocking. really, really good position to, as he defended that play too. Didn't bite for the fake, was in great position. Let's see where the football is down at. It's on the 12-yard line. So, again, Wildcats with not good field position, but at least they uh, have gotten yet their uh, second turnover in the football game. They can get something generated offensively. Welsh is in the backfield along with Skyler Lehman. I think the big challenge is field Quick position. Quick out, Vandermark. And he's corralled quickly. He might have even lost a yard on that one. Yeah, that was just excellent open field tackling by number 22, Brady Kirk. But I like the play. I like getting your athlete out there in space. And, and sorry, that play was made, uh, looked like by um, David Escorn out there. Well, they're going to put the football right back down on the 12-yard line, so it's a no-gain situation. I like the play call, though. Quick out, quick quick pass, get your athlete out in space, and let them try to make somebody miss. Walsh hands off to Lehman, and too many black shirts in the middle of the pile that time to move the football. Yeah, he looked a little tentative. Once he received the football, nowhere to go, nowhere to run, and really not much of a crease anywhere. Yeah. Seemed sort of uh, stop in his tracks and then just try to bulldoze ahead. Too many big fellas up front wearing black shirts with orange numbers on them. <laughs> nowhere to go. Third and ten. Trips right, single receiver left. Lehman and Welsh in the backfield. This will be Welsh to throw. Zach looks, 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 dumps it off and throws it away. Got a flag came in too. 
That's right about where you call hold, Scott. Yeah, I'm guessing that's a holding. And so Elida's got a choice of what to do with this one. It's going to be fourth and ten if they decline. That's really a pretty good play by Welch. He didn't have a receiver open, so he just dumped, threw it in the grass so that, you know wouldn't take a loss and wouldn't get uh, an INT. Yeah, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do is, you know, throw it at the receiver's feet, throw it into the grass, into the turf to avoid that uh, intentional grounding. The penalty was declined, so we'll go with the play. And for the fourth time, we go to punt formation. Yeah, once again, Welsh has got a punt from deep in his own end zone. The light of defense has been very, very good this evening. They give up uh, 8.7 points on the year. They're number one in the conference against the rush, which is 56 yards given up. Yeah, that's an impressive stat. Here's, oh, drop the football. Does well. She kicks it. And he gets over the line of scrimmage, and Elida falls on it at the bath 25. And number six, Amari Walsh falls on that football. So kind of with interesting. He's a freshman. I think he's getting uh, coached up a little bit. Probably should have let that football go. So they're going to take over the football on the bath 15-yard line. Well, to be honest with you, I thought Walsh made a great effort at just punting the football away and away. picking up, yeah. you know, an extra 10 or 12 yards there because he was about to go down at about the two. So now we have another true test for the bat defense. And again, you know, a situation like that, a block punt, a short punt, or a shank punt like that is almost the equivalent of a turnover because it's really, you know, it's a, it, it's tough. It's demoralizing, and now you got to stand up defensively and keep your light out of the end zone. Tyler Carter gets this handoff, and he pushes forward to about the, the 13. I think Bath defensively has done a pretty good job so far, really, in containing this Elida offense. If they can make a stand here, I think it would be really impressive. It would really go a long way, I think, for, you know, for their, for, for their emotions and for their, you know, just their whole psyche of the team. Play clock at 15 from the 13-yard line. Henderson puts a man in motion. Here's the handoff. Cut to get back inside is Carter, and he gets inside the five. That's going to be a first down. We ought to throw some props towards this offensive line for Elida. The center is Tyler Seifker. He wears 55. The two guards are 54, Wyatt Klett, and 62, Luke Alexander. The tackles are, four, are uh, uh, 55, Torrey Thomas, and 75, Travis Atkins. The tight end is Aiden Daly, who wears 40. And that is a Union Bank first down to the four-yard line. Henderson will keep it himself. Down the backfield he goes. Quick play inside by the Wildcats' Corey Slate. Yeah, really quick reaction there. He's a sophomore, six foot, 260 pounds, and he's got some speed. Just exploded, got in the backfield, complete disruption. Three-yard loss, back to the seven. To the right of Mark and Henderson goes Tyler Carter. A little bit outside pressure come in for Bath. Henderson looks, here's the rush, and did they get him? Nope, he eludes it. Here's a flag behind the play. Henderson tries to bully his way into the end zone. He looking for a call. He got another flag down on the far side of the field. Yeah, the official has uh, already pointed. It's against the Elida, so that uh, that touchdown is going to come off the board. Well, let's see what happens on the far side of the field. Way away from the play, we got a call over there also. You can see a good job of avoiding the rush right there. And then we're going to get this collision right there. He did get in the end zone. Yeah, he definitely won that collision. And let's see what the, the call is from Bill Horvath. Hold. Holding offense. 
10 yards from the spot, the foul, second down. So that will wipe the touchdown off the board. Yeah, this, the second flag yeah. must have uh, it been was, for the same penalty. It must just, have been, although it came in later, it must have been. And that's a spot foul, so we're gonna take that from the 14 back 10. And we're going all the way back to the 24 yard line. So that makes it second and goal from the 24. Well, and if you're Bath Wildcat, this defense, that, that's moving in the right direction <laughs> for sure. They were cleared down at one point on about the four yard line. Orkin Henderson did not run like a 175 pound quarterback right there. He's going to roll right this time. Got a screen set up. This is Etzcorn. Etzcorn's going to be brought down by from behind. How about the play by Corey Slate once yeah. again? Yeah, it's number 70 again. Uh, showing speed and quickness, moving that 260 pounds around the field. You can see him, he's he's a down lineman on the nose and just hustles to the outside here, pursues the play, and he's able to make a tackle. Just a two-yard pickup, so I it love goes that to effort. third and 22. Me too. I. You know, and those big guys in the middle don't get credit very often, but that that's just an effort play. And that's the kind of play that can, that can really spark something here for the Bath Wildcats. This is a man in motion is Kovalt. And Kovalt gets the handoff, throws it towards the end zone, and it's fighting the end zone. It's knocked away. If that looks surprising to you, last year when Larkin Henderson got hurt, Kovalt played quarterback. So that is not an unfamiliar position for him to throw the football. Yeah, it was a nice play, good design, but Skyler Lehman was not fooled at all. In perfect position, great coverage. I thought he had a chance to pick that off, and he's able to knock it away, though. I think we're going to get a field goal attempt by Grant Hardeman. 5'11", senior. Going to put the football down on the 28-yard line. It makes it a 38-yard attempt with 5.27 to go. And here's the kick. It's going to be... He made it! From 38 yards out, Grant Hardeman scores a three-point field goal, and Elida takes a 10-0 lead. You're watching high school football, WOSN. You get a second look here at the field goal. It makes it over the crossbar bar by about a foot, <laughs> if that. But it's three points on the board for the Elida Bulldogs. You're watching high school football, WOSN. The Bulldogs put up three points. Tonight's touchdown sponsor, however, is TND Interiors. For quality you can stand on visit TND Interiors on Allentown Road. Well, the Wildcats hold again. Yeah, they turned the football over on their own 15, gave up just three, so the defense is kind of hanging them in there. Well, he was two for two coming in. Now he's three for three, field goals made. Here's Lehman, and Lehman gets uh, over the 25. 5.15 to go. The Wildcats still have a pair of timeouts left if they can generate some offense here. That's some decent field position to start with here. You know, it, it, I, I view that defensive stand that Bath took there as a pretty good stand. I mean, they really did a nice job of keeping Elida, a high-powered offense, out of the end zone, forcing them to kick the field goal. They made the field goal, uh, but, but, you know, a 38-yard attempt is, is – is pretty impressive to begin with, but I thought Bass defensive unit really played well in that series. It's reverse and back again. This ball is going to be thrown deep. I got a guy wide open, and the Wildcats have found a man headed for the end zone. It's Blaine Albright, and he scores on a trickery play. Wow. That'll be a top 10 play of this week. I was going to say, I was just about to say that, Mark. That's going to be a top 10 play. No question about it. But uh, I love Sullivan's arm here. Good arm strength. And he threw this. He's get a good look at this. As he's being hit, bang, and puts it right on the money. Great job. You get a good look there at number five, Blaine Albright. We're running into the end zone. And the Wildcats are back in the football well, game. now we got a game. Yes, we do. Their PAT guy is Jacob Lepley. He 
is one for one on the season. He's also made a couple of field goals. And the left-footed kicker is going to try to cut this to a three-point lead. And he does so. Stays perfect. The Wildcats with a TND Interiors touchdown have cut the lead to three. You're watching High School Football, WOSN. We've had just a single timeout tonight, but our timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. You can call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So the Wildcats, Scott, they get back in the game. They're back in it for sure. You know, we talked to Ryan Reindell, the uh, Bath coach. He said one of the keys to the game is they want to create big plays, a big pass, a long run, special teams, something, a turnover. They've got the turnovers. They weren't able to capitalize on it. Here they come up with that big play. Let's see if that swings the momentum a little bit, that see what they can do. Play took all of 19 seconds to go 73 yards. Cuts the Bulldog lead to just that field goal that was made a moment ago. Well, and you see that sometimes, you know, when the, when the defense relaxes. They just relax for a second, and that's all it takes. Carson Myers bounces it down the field. It takes a big hop. And trying to leap over the pile and not finding much room to run. Uh, the Bulldogs will. He's on the bottom of that pile. Oh, it's like number 15 it is. 15 is Isaac Earl. Yeah, it looks like number 18, Ethan Cole. And a wild. sophomore made the tackle. 6'3", 150 pounds. And the Wildcat defense, which has been tested mightily this evening, but has given up just 10 points. Let's see if they can get a stop or if Elida jumps back into it here as we have under five minutes to go before halftime. Our halftime sponsor tonight is Locks in uh, Chiropractic Adjustment, and we'll be talking about things both teams can do in the second half. That's coming up at halftime this evening. Plenty of time for the Elida offense. See Henderson looking to the sideline, get a play call, and they have to take a timeout, a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency is serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Lida forced to take a timeout. Let's turn this around. Let's go. Henderson uh, sets up in the backfield. And he will roll to his left. Henderson looks. And gets chased again. Slate chased him that time. He just throws it away, and then he gets clobbered. And let's hope Larkin Henderson gets up. Because a year ago, that young man was hurt, and we want to see that senior finish out his, his high school career. And uh, he is still down on the sideline. Now he gets up, and he's going to walk it off a bit. See, Scott, who checked in? There's our sideline shot of him. There's Larkin Henderson right there. Very talented senior. Second, see who the new quarterback is, Scott. Yeah, he looked like he was okay there walking away. They're going to take yeah. a timeout, though, to talk about it, make sure everybody knows what they're doing. They are going to take a timeout. One would assume that it will be Jackson Kovalt. We'll check it out while we're at break. We're back after this. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Tonight's sister replay sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Arkin Henderson is on the sideline with his hat off, talking to the trainer. And they're looking at his ribs. And Jackson Kovalt is the quarterback. Not an unfamiliar position to Jackson, as when Henderson was hurt a year ago, he moved into that spot. Jackson Kovalt is a 6 foot 175 pound junior. And he is alone in the backfield. Puts a man in motion. Here's the handoff. Trying to get wide and getting wide and doing so. That's a good run by Etzcorn. He's up near the first down marker. Yeah, and I like that play, too, when you got a quarterback coming in fresh. First play, it's a sure handoff there. You're doubly sure at the mesh point. And uh, he goes ahead and gives it to, to uh, number three, David Etzcorn. And Etzcorn knows what to do with it. First down. 11-yard pickup. It's a Union Bank first down from their own 47-yard line. 
Cobalt looks to the sideline. Got Kirk in the backfield with him. This will be Kirk. And Brady lowers his head, runs through the tackle of Kane Sullivan to the 49, picks up a couple. And again, I like the play call here. You got a fresh quarterback, even though he's got some experience and he's been playing all in the game. He comes in, he's got to, you know, all of a sudden assume the quarterback spot. Two very safe plays, handoffs for run. Scott, they're working on Larkin Henderson right in front of us, and they have put a rib pad on him and trying to get his it all adjusted. Perhaps he will be back in the football game. Koval will hand off again, cutting back inside as that's corn again. That play's been good for him. He runs right through the tackle of uh, Preston Young, and that will be a first down. Yeah, I like Ed scoring. He runs with power. He's got some speed and vision. You see him find the crease here, and, and I like that he accelerates through there, protects the football. He's able to break a couple tackles and then takes on the defender when at the, at the point of contact, picks up an extra two or three yards. With the Union Bank first down there to the Wildcat, 28. Brady Kirk in the backfield with Jackson Kovald, and we got movement, I think. All the Wildcats are yelling penalty, and nobody did anything. Here's Kirk, off left tackle, bounces off one inside the 25 to the 23. And there's our man, uh, Corey Slight, again, number 70 for Bath on the tackle. And I think you got a, bit, a little bit of a sense of urgency now for Elida. It's 238 and counting. They're on their own. Well, 22. we've seen this before. That's corn. That play has been good for them here on this drive. Yeah, they've run it a couple times, yeah. three times to the left side. I'd like to see him now turn around and run it to the right side where you got more field. Give Escorn a little more grass to work with. I think that that play would work. Here it is again on the Fat Jacks replay. Ryan Rydell, the bath coach, says we need a timeout to discuss this play. 2.27 to go before half. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We're back at Kraft Stadium here at Elida. Our first downs this evening are sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. And with the Metzger Financial Services timeout, Coach Ryan Rundell says we got to figure out something. They've run the ball seven consecutive plays, six consecutive plays, and picking up yardage. Well, with 227 left, the ball in the 16-yard line, you've got uh, plenty of time to really run anything in your playbook. And you know what? We just looked down. They have put a sling now on the right shoulder of Larkin Henderson. So they were actually taking that rib pad off. Koval to throw. Koval looks to the end zone and throws. Is it it's caught? Hot. It is. Fighting for the football in the end zone and yanking it down is Etzkor. David with a touchdown catch from Koval. Wow, just a well-thrown football by Jackson Koval coming in and in, uh, in, in cleanup duties at quarterback, puts it exactly where it needs to be. Only the receiver is going to make that catch. Great catch by David Etzkorn. Touchdowns tonight are sponsored by T&D Interiors. That's Etzkorn's first receiving touchdown on the year. Here's that kick by... Hardeman, and of leg. he puts it through, as you said, with plenty of leg, and it will go to 1770 Lida. You're watching high school football on WOSN. John Stocker Dentist is tonight's premier sponsor for the Lida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And well, they answer. You know, they, they lose your quarterback, and he looks like he's out for the rest of the game with his arm in a sling over here, and. They run the football, and then Koval strikes to Etzkorn. Well, you know, in that play where where he got hurt. Um, Larkin Henderson, that is, he, he, he was just trying to throw the football away, but he opened himself up, and he took a hit right as he was throwing that. It looks like he, he's done for the night. This football is headed deep to Lehman. And he darts up to about the 29-yard line. 2.16 to go and just one timeout's left. Yeah, but an excellent drive by Elida all the way down the field there and scoring really in about uh, two and a half minutes. 
they were able to navigate about 60 yards for the score. Beautifully thrown football uh, for the score. Now Bath needs to, to, to answer if possible. They've got two minutes to work with here. Let's see what they have. Kickoff was actually done by Mikey Hale. He gets it to the 30-yard line. Here's Zach Welch to throw. Got Lehman, and Lehman steps through the first guy, but can't make the second guy miss. So it's complete, but uh, short yardage, perhaps to the 32-yard line pickup of two. You know, I like the switch here. Um, Welsh looks comfortable back there at quarterback now. He looks like he's kind of getting, getting comfortable. And, and now you've got kind of two different options back there from – if you're Bath, you've got two different running backs that you can go to. You've got Sullivan in one case, and then you also have, you know, multiple options that way. I think it, it, it's a good offensive move for Bath. Luke Alexander hustled out to help make that play. Second and eight Wildcats. Trips right. And who moved? Everybody. It's off all. They're going to call it on Elida. So that makes it a little bit better as they move it to the 37. They need three now on second down. Elida will get the football first in half number two. They won the toss tonight and deferred. Puts a little bit more pressure on the Wildcats to score here perhaps. Trips right. And I think they're going to run the same play they had before. We've got Sullivan in the slot. Look for him to get the football. He's very athletic in the open field. Welsh pump fakes, throws it up the sideline, and it's caught as it inbounds. It looks like it is. He puts the football right in the hands of Blaine Albright as he went up and got it, and the Wildcats are in business all the way down to the 35-yard line. Yeah, nice little pump fake here, a little hitch and go, and you can see the football. Nice throw, puts it right where it needs to be. Blaine Albright goes up and gets that. With a minute to go here in half number one. Wildcats are on the 35 of Elida. That was a well-thrown ball and even better catch. Looks again. Welsh looks. Now he's going to step up and runs it inside the 35. Wildcats only have one timeout left. they got to be on a hurry here. He picked up two to the 33. I do like Welsh's decision-making. A couple times tonight, the receivers – have been covered. The defense for Elida has done a good job in the secondary, and he's recognized that, tucked the football, and run. Got Lehman in the backfield with him. Welsh to throw against a three-man rush, crossing route. Albright again. Albright's got some wheels. Albright inside the 20 before he goes down. It's going to be a Union Bank first down. And he, did he get out of bounds? I don't think he did. Yeah, I thought he was going to try to get out of bounds there, and he opted to to kind of dive forward, and I think he's in bounds. The clock stops while they move the chains, but I think it's going to start on the whistle, and it has. We got an equipment thing over here. Albright's over here trying to get his shoe fixed. So with 13 seconds to go, and the Wildcats on the 16-yard line as they pick up 17, Albright's got some wheels. Well, when they – when they it was 22 seconds when they hey, moved yeah. the sticks, and they lost about nine seconds there in that equipment malfunction. I think our official, Bill Horvath, said put 22 seconds on the clock. There you go. Give us some line. Give us something. And they did so. But I think the clock will start as soon – yes, it does, because he did not get out of bounds. And there we go. Now we're winding it. Trips left. High snap. Sullivan bounces, bubbles, bobbles the football and cuts inside. He gets to the 15. Well, that was a dangerous play. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and Bath will take their final timeout, our final Metzger Services timeout with 11 seconds to go. Yeah, and you see Skyler Lehman, that ball was popping around. He was fortunate <laughs> to pull that back in. But he lighted or Bath now on about the, uh, the 16 yard line. 11 seconds to go. You got to come up with something. Well, they I, have. I think they have the opportunity to throw the football a couple times here. Get in there, you know, look into the end zone if they can make a play, and if not, they have time for the next. Here's Bath's schedule coming up. 
We've got Ottawa, Glendorf, Salina, and Defiance, two of the, all three of those Western Buckeye League games. And then you can see that uh, Elida has Salina, Defiance. Their schedule is really backloaded as they get Wapak, St. Mary's, Van Wert, uh, all late in the season. Wildcats out of timeouts with 11 seconds to go. Welsh looks, 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 and dumps it out of bounds with six seconds to go. Now they have a field goal kicker who has made two, but both of them have been relatively short, 21 and 22 yards for Jacob Lepley. And they're going to have to put this football down if he tries this one right about. Looks like the 22-yard the line makes it a 32-yard kick for the freshman. And you got big number 79, Kevin McGuire coming Here's in there the for a little Here's bit of the pass kick. rush. It is up and it is good. He sails it through. So both field goal kickers have made one this evening. That one is a 32-yarder, and Jacob Lepley stays perfect on the season with just two seconds to go. And plenty of leg. It Mark. did. Yes, it did. Let's take a break. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Well, the Wildcats put three on the board, but our touchdown sponsor tonight is T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. Got it back to a seven-point game to the Wildcats. Each team has made a field goal this evening. And with two seconds to go, the Wildcats will kick off. Carson Myers, the guy who does the kickoff duties for Bath. I want to bet he just dribbles this one down, and they force Elida to pick it up and run the clock out. Let's see. Here comes Myers. There you go. Bounce it, bounce it, and it's going to be picked up. And down he goes, and the first half will come to an end. Elida with a 17 on the board, Bath with 10. we got the halftime show coming up. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back at Elida Craft Stadium, where tonight's halftime adjustment is brought to you by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Mark Shine and Scott Nurse here at Craft Stadium. Elida has taken a 17-10 lead over the Bath Wildcats. They scored first. Actually, they went up 10-0 on a one-yard uh, play, and then a field goal. Bath got a 10-7. It got 17-7. Then a field goal by Lepley late made it 17-10, and that's where we are at this particular point in time. Scott Nurse, how about keys to the second half? What kind of adjustments do you have for the two teams? Well, I think for Bath, I think, number one, you got to continue the course. They're playing pretty well defensively. They got a couple big plays offensively. I think you got to stay with what you got. You got to protect the football. They have two turnovers. One of them led directly to the score, which is the difference in the game. And then one turnover impacted field position for two possessions. So it really put them in a hole. And, and then third, I think they're in this game. So you've got to, you, you, Coach talked about we've got to have some big plays, and Coach Reindel talked about getting a big play. They've gotten those big plays, so they just got to capitalize on them. If you're Elida, they had two turnovers early, and their quarterback goes with, out with what looks like to be some sort of shoulder in it. So adversity, right? I think now you've got to really focus. You've got to really execute on the offensive side of the football, and I think then you've got to raise the intensity. You've got to up the intensity. They've been a little flat from what they've been the first three weeks. They've got to, br they've got to bring it up a notch and really do what they do. Thank you very much for Scott as we plan that. If you look at the very top of your screen, you can see a lot of Bath Wildcat fans tonight in gold shirts. There's a similar group for Elida down in the end zone. There you can see the students. It is Childhood Cancer Awareness Night, and both schools uh, sold those T-shirts, did some fundraisers, and all the money will go to Childhood Cancer Research, and uh, we just appreciate both schools getting together for that, Scott. Yeah, my daughter is a cancer survivor. She had ca cancer as a, as a child and uh, underwent surgery. They removed tumors, and uh, she is a vibrant senior at the University of Cincinnati these days and uh, doing well. So thanks to all of that That is a research. good thing. Jacob Lepley pops this kick off up. It bounces, and boy, it gets snowed under as soon as he retrieves the football out of the air. That was a bit of a scary thing for a moment. Was number 15, Isaac Earl, and Elida will take over 
here in half number two. Yeah, nice tackle there by Skyler Lehman. He's, uh, he's been doing a little bit of everything tonight. Skyler's had a good night defensively, hasn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. Played well as a defensive back, knocking down a couple passes. This is Jackson Kovalt. He is the quarterback now that Larkin Henderson is out of a role that he played a year ago for the Bulldogs. And he's looked good. He has. He, he came in on has. a couple series in the second quarter and, and has really looked good through a touchdown he pass. He snagged that high pa uh, snap right there and hands the ball off to Brady Kirk, who gets knocked out of bounds. Well, and the good thing is if you're Elida, you, you know, he's got some experience back there. So it, it's not like you're bringing somebody fresh off the bench that's never been under the Friday night lights. You've got somebody that's a seasoned veteran. He's played multiple positions. He knows the offense. He's able to step in and, and do a, a, a good job so far. Give him a couple of yards on first down to the 41-yard line. Second and eight. Kirk stays in the backfield with Koval. Koval wears number seven. Kirk is number 22. This will be Koval to throw. Quick out. And that ball is caught as he put the ball into the hands of Seth Sharp. Jackson Koval's got a good arm, too. He does. This quarter is sponsored to you. The third quarter is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time, and you can call cnbohio.com. That ball went to the 41-yard line. You know, I like that, too. Jackson threw that football right as the receiver's making his cut. They need three, and that's a good run by Kirk as he powers for a first down. He runs through a tackle of Carson Kennard and gets a first down. That is a Union Bank first down. He gets to the 48-yard line. That's a pickup of seven on third down. Yeah, Brady Kirk's their number one ru rusher, averaging 77 yards a game, almost seven yards per carry. And he stays in the backfield with Jackson Koval. Two receivers go to Koval's left. And this will be a handoff to Kirk. He runs to the short side of the field and stumbles. Had some open ground in front of him, went down right at the 50. Well, we're one of the unique places here in Elida with the natural grass. And, uh, you know, just after dark when the dew settles on it, it gets a little slick sometimes, and you see he just lost his feet there. That is exactly what happened after a two-yard pickup. A little slippery yet. Second and eight, Bulldogs. Single receiver. Kirk again, this time he runs left, picks his way, and then rumbles. Kirk gets down to the Wildcat 45-yard line, a pickup of five. You know, Mark, they've uh, they sprinkled a pass in there, but they've run this play four times from scrimmage in this uh, third quarter. They run it to the right, they run it to the left. I think they've got a commitment to run the football, and, you know, that may be a, been a part of the halftime speech that they got. Let's just go out and let's power the football down the field and see what we now, can do. You had to say sprinkle, did you? And I'll tell you a story behind that in just a moment. It's third and three. <laughs> Koval looks to the sideline to his coach to get the play call. Kirk switches to the other side of. And we're going to get a penalty. False start. Yep, false start. It's going to move it back. My nephew, who is a uh, recent move to Elida after graduating, challenged me tonight to use the word sprinkle in the game during the telecast. <laughs> and you just took away my opportunity. But I'm going to count that as uh, because you were going to, you said what I was going to say. Does that count? It, it does, and and you used the word sprinkle back to me. I did. So, so, I so think we're all I, good. I, I think we did so. Yeah. And I'm going to get some pizza with uh, pepperoni sprinkled on it when this is over. There you go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Here we go. It's third down and eight after the penalty. Koval's going to roll right. It's being chased. Koval looks, and he's going to tuck it himself and runs out of bounds short of the first down. Jackson Koval picked up some yardage, but he's going to be short of the first down. It'll be decision time here for Coach Harmon. Well, Koval's a threat with his feet, too. You can see here he's got good speed. Gets to the outside, just not quite enough for the first down. Opts to go out of bounds, which I think is probably a smart play. He saw his quarterback not do that in the, in the first half and end up uh, out of the game. Four yard, it's fourth and four after a four yard pickup. So Bath is going to hold, it appears, in the punt formation time on the opening possession of half number two for the Bulldogs. High snap. It's reeled in, and there's our punt. Good kick away by Logan Crow, and it's going to bounce. 
he's a fourth leading punter in the WBL, 36 yeah. and a half yards a punt. And Bath will get the football back. We got a penalty flag down. Let's see what this call's all about. One thing for sure, it is not going to sprinkle this evening. We have an absolutely delightful night for football, especially after the sun went down and cooled the temperatures a bit. We do. I'm hoping and that uh, we won't get any sprinkles tomorrow either. I'm going to the Ohio State game. I went last week, and it sprinkled all day long. Poor rain. Well, we're having quite a conference here with our officiating crew. Well, where the flag was thrown is kind of in the middle of no man's land, so it wasn't really at the line of scrimmage for the punt team. And we're going to pick it up They're and gonna wave pick it, it up. off. Yeah. yeah. So Elida has the football for two minutes and 48 seconds, and Bath will get the football on their own 20. And again, the Bath defense holds. They bend a little, but uh, they're able to get the football back and not too bad a field position. Their quarterback is Zach Welch. He's got Skyler Lehman in the backfield with him. And I think we're getting an explanation to Coach Rindell on the sidelines. And that's our current holdup, and I think we're ready to go now. Referee Bill Horvath will put the ball in play, and here we go. Layman bounces it off tackle, and he gets snowed under. Good defense. On the bottom of the pile is number 50, and that is Parker Krim. Yeah, number 44, Luke, Luke Burkholder, was also in on that play, a sophomore. 5'8", 165 pounds. You know, Elida plays a lot of younger younger go, players. They're, Let's go. They've, they've got some talent in the pipelines, no question about it. Just a single yard pickup on first down, second and nine. Receivers go two by two this time for Welsh. And here comes man in motion, handoff, Hale. Cuts back inside, Mikey Hale, and he gets over the 25 to about the 27. Going to be short, but it's going to be a makeable third down. Yeah, third and about two. I like I like the cut here. He puts a hard right foot into the turf, cuts upfield, gets as much as he can get, and falls forward. Well, Scott, we have a bulldog on the field, and while the medical staff treats him, we're going to take a break. You're watching High School Football WOSN. We're back at Kraft Stadium where tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years of offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Coming off was number 55, Torrey Thomas. Looked like a left leg injury, and trainers are working with him. Yeah, they got the rolling pins out. I think it's a cramp of some sort, but he, he's made some plays tonight. He's been a vital port, part of that Elida defense. That was a direct snap to Sullivan, and Elida holds. So it's going to be fourth and about a yard and a half, maybe a long two. Kane Sullivan, who stepped in and played some quarterback to do just exactly this this evening, but uh, too much penetration by the guys wearing black jerseys. It looks like they go to punt formation with the ball on a 28. Well, anytime you know you have a direct snap to a non-quarterback, there's a high likelihood they're going to run the football, right? So you got the defense keying on them. Unless you just get absolutely excellent blocking, a lot of times uh, – you know, that, that play is, is stuffed. Zach Welch is the punter. He steps in. Wildcats will punt on their first possession as he lighted did. Gets that one off. Etzcorn is going to track it down on his own 35-yard line. And first guy makes the first guy miss. Had good pressure from Albright down there, but the tackle will occur right about the 40-yard line. Elida will get the ball the second time here in the second half. Yeah, nice punt and nice coverage there by Kane Sullivan on the tackle. Albright did just what he was supposed to do, forced him back to the middle of the field. So we're starting on the 40-yard line. Will Elida with this particular possession. Taking nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award if you would like to nominate one of your coaches. Christian character, success on the field, success in the community. You can do that by going to our website and finding the John Reed Leadership Award. Here's a snap. Koval's going to roll right. Quick pass. Caught. That's Corn. No, it's not S. Corn. That is um, Keaton Hawkey. 
Picking up with Keaton's name there, but a, a Union Bank first down. Good pass, good route. Yeah, Keaton came into the game with 192 yards catch, catching the football. Averages 16 per catch. He's got three touchdowns, so good set of hands right there. That 11-yard pickup is a Union Bank first down. Into Wildcat territory they go. Handoff. And Brady Kirk runs through the first tackle, but there's two other Wildcats there, including a guy's name we've called a lot tonight, Corey Slott. Six-foot sophomore. Yeah, I'm really impressed with him. He's able to get side to side. He covers the wide side of the field, and he starts as a down lineman at the nose, and he's able to uh, pursue the running plays sideline to sideline. You know Good job he, there. He may be 260, but he is not an overweight 260. That young man's put together. Yeah, and he's quick. He is. Two receivers left, a couple of wing backs for Koval. Man in motion. Here's the handoff, and trying to spin away from a tackler is Tyler Carter. Might have got a couple. Yeah, Blaine Albright in there. Good good job not allowing that play to get to the wide side. They try to turn it back in. He makes the tackle, too. That's exactly what you want from that defensive end, that outside linebacker position. Well, here they go, third and eight. You know, for a Wildcat team that's given up 198 yards rushing on the season, they've done pretty well this evening. Against an Elida team that uh, runs the ball typically pretty well. 220 plus yards a game. Here's Koval to throw. Zips it over the middle. I'm not sure which one of those two guys it was intended for, but it went past a couple of guys and falls on the ground. Well, that was a bullet. It was. Absolute bullet. Koval's got an arm on him. You see him put it right here, and, and you're right, Mark. It could have been to either one of those two receivers. So for the second time this half, Logan Crow holds it, held, goes into punt formation. Wildcats put Skyler Lehman deep. He's back inside his, or standing right about his own 15-yard line. Low snap, and Crow gets it off and heads it to the sideline. And that's a good punt. We're just going to hop out of bounds. That's headed for the end zone. And looking for a call Touchback. from the officials. Touchback. I was waiting for a call. I thought that's what we were going to get. That's a 48-yard punt, though. Well, that's going to move him up in the WBL. Nice so punt. Bath will get the ball on their own 20, just like they did on their previous possession in this half. Well, Mark, you brought up a good point last uh, couple plays ago. Bath defensively has been really holding their own throughout this game. Uh, done a nice job defensively. The offense just needs to get going a little bit here. I think if they can put something together, they're in this game. They just need another one of those big plays. Zach Welch, Skyder Lehman in the backfield. Welch turns, looks, throws, guns it over the middle. Caught as he found uh, this time Dalton Woodruff. And did they get to the first down sticks? They did not. He got to the 29, so it'll be second down. Here's a good look at it. Yeah, excellent throw by Lehman. Puts it right in a tight window. You can see there are four black jerseys right around that receiver. He had a small window to put that in, and he, he put it right there. Second and one. This time the receivers go three left. Actually four is they bring Sullivan out this way as well. And Welch will step inside, and he's going to try to fight for the first down. Let's see what the mark is. I think he's going to be a little short. Zach Welch, 5'11", freshman, goes 160, and he did put it down short. Back to the line of scrimmage it goes, third down. Yeah, they overloaded the left side with the receivers and then uh, just tried to – Parker Just Krim out there again. Direct run to the right side and nothing there. And we have that cramp situation again. So we're going to take a break. Hopefully we'll get this taken care of. We'll get back quickly. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067. Or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. The Wildcats are going to run for a first down. That was uh, Torrey Thomas with, who cramped up again. And then there's a nice run by the Wildcats for a first down. Yeah, that was Tyshawn Davis, number 52, a senior. 
normally an outside linebacker. There's pass going to loft to deep. He's Albright got a man. Shot. He's got him and he dropped it. Oh. Boy, they tried to quick hit him. Albright had a step or two on the defender. Just wasn't able to hold on to the football. You know, I'm looking. Is that? It was Albright. Okay, I wasn't quite sure. That was a – they tried to, to snap quickly after the first down play. And they put it out there. Boy, and that was that and big play, Mark. The defender that, that waved in front of him. This is Davis again. Tyshawn Davis will push the pile forward. He picks up about three to the 38, where it'll be third and seven. Yeah, he's six foot, 225 pounds, and I mean, he's a load. You can see when he's hit, he falls yeah. forward another couple, two, three yards. All you gotta do is look at that jersey number. That young man's been playing tackle this evening, and he gets to lug the rock a couple times here. Third and seven. We're down to three to go in a quarter. High formation. Welsh to throw, looks, looks, looks now. Has to run for it, and he's gonna get pushed out of bounds before he can get to the first down marker. It's gonna be close. I think he was looking for a screen there and I don't know if the uh, the mm. running back fell down or somebody, but he had nobody out there to throw it to, and so he had to take off running. Well, I think, Scott, uh, he got pushed out well before I thought he did. Yeah, he did. And he's going to only get to the 40-yard line, so they need five yet on fourth down, and looks like perhaps we're looking at another Welsh punt. Yeah, I think it's a smart decision. You're tempted yep. to go for it here. But that's, I think it's a little too early in the game. That's Corn drifts back to his own 30. There's the punt. And that's going to have to let it hit and roll. That turns out to be a good punt. You know what? He's punted well, particularly as the game went along. I don't think his first punt was his best effort, but he's had a, he's had a good leg this evening. And well, Elida, with 2.38 to go, gets the football. Well, you know, he's been playing quarterback, too. So he's out there, he's warm, he's mm -hmm. loose, and he's into the game, not nervous. You know, the nerves have kind of worn off, been hit out of you, if you will. So uh, a lot of times that leads to, you know, as the game progresses, you get a little better. Back to the 23-yard line go the Elida Bulldogs. This is their third possession of half number two. And Jackson Kovalt will head back to the quarterback position. If you just joined us, Larkin Henderson. Left the game with some type of an arm injury. His arm was in a sling. His throwing arm was in a sling when he left the field. Yeah, Mark, we've been trying to find him on the sidelines. Yeah. We don't see him either. Good run. Kirk breaks a tackle and keeps falling forward. Kirk ran through a Bath Wildcat, and that Wildcat is still down. Now let's see if he gets himself up. Nope, he cannot. It looks like Sullivan's down. Let's take a look at this play again. He runs through the first tackle, Scott. And there's the hit, and it is Sullivan who's down. We're going to take a break while they deal with Kane. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's system replay sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Could get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Kane Sullivan was the injured player. Kind of hobbled off a bit. See if he can get himself back into football game or not. It certainly played well this evening, particularly on a defensive end. Trying to get to the corner is Etzcorn. Etzcorn lowers his shoulder and he gets to the 34 before he's been corralled by Vinny Vendetta. Yeah, and that's going to be just enough for a first down, I believe. It's going to be real close. Yeah, they go ahead and give it to him. Great effort by him at the end of this run to put his shoulder down, attack the defender, and pick up that extra yard or two, just enough for the first down. You're going to see him right there. He gets low and goes after it. Union Bank first down for Delighted Bulldogs and David Etzkorn. And off, trying to sweep left, and a cutback, look out. Got some speed, Tyler Carter. No, it's not Tyler Carter, it's Amari Walsh. 
And Amari Wash all the way to the end zone. 67 yard touchdown run, Amari Wash. Wow. He had three carries coming into tonight. I believe that's his first carry tonight. And you can see once he gets through this initial defense, he just accelerates. He's got some serious speed there. He's only a freshman. 5'9", 155 pound freshman gets to the house. So in just 56 seconds, the Elida Bulldogs strike and they will bring in their, their PAT guy, Grant Hardeman, who's had a big night tonight so far. And Hardeman line drives that one through. And Elida for the TND interior touchdown will take a 24 10 lead over the Wildcats. You're watching high school football on WOSN. John Stocker Dennis is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. A 67 yard touchdown run by Amari Wash. That was a three play drive. They went 77 yards and did so. In 56 seconds, Grant Hardeman bang through the PAT, and all of a sudden the Bulldogs have a two touchdown, two PTA, PAT lead. And Mark, I believe that Hardeman now is still perfect on the season. He came in 13 for 13 in PATs and two for two field goals. He's hit a field goal tonight and made both PATs. Here's his kickoff attempt, and he line drives it deep. It's caught. This is Hale. Hale's got some room to run. Nice speedy run for Mikey Hale. That's a pretty good field position, but they now trail by 14. And the football goes down on the 36-yard line of the Wildcats. Good aggressive return there by Mikey Hale. Mikey Hale, just a freshman, 5'7", 135. Bath needs an answer now. It's starting to get late in the third quarter. They're down two scores. They need to put together a drive here. Zach Welsh, got her layman in the backfield. This will be Welch in a quick pass. It's caught. Nope, it's dropped. Dalton Woodruff tried to run before he caught it. That's exactly what happened. I like the play call, though. I yeah. like uh, trying to get him the football out there in space. He had a blocker ahead of him, make one guy miss, and, and it can turn into a long play. But you got to catch it first. Well, how many times do we see that? You get so excited, you're going to get the football out there, a chance to make a play, and, and just get ahead of yourself. But uh, Woodruff's just a junior. The top playing time, obviously, through the last six games of this year and all of next year. So look forward to seeing him on the field. Lehman, Skyler with no room to run. Too many big bodies up front. Looks like he gained perhaps a yard to the 37, Scott. Yeah, and you can see a little bit of intensity level raise for Elida right here defensively. They're starting to get excited. They were clapping some hands. 39 Wildcats. 60 seconds to go here in quarter number three. Receivers go two left, one right, plus a slot back. Layman in the backfield will take this hand. Nope. Welsh looks, looks, throws, and threw it into traffic, and it goes down. Albright was out there, but he had two defenders with him. And looks like Albright, a little slow getting up. Now he's okay. Yeah, he went down. I thought uh, Steve Johns might throw the flag there. He kind of reached towards his belt, but I think Albright just fell down on his own, own accord, so he chose to keep that flag in his pocket. You know, you know, I used to referee basketball with Steve, and that, that was before that, that magnificent beard he's <laughs> got going on there, that ZZ Top special. So Zach Welch heads into punt formation for the third time in this half. And David Detscorn heads into, oh, a oh, quick a snap. Fake. Look out, it's a fake. Cuts back inside and room to run. First down yardage on a trick play. This is Lehman, and Skyler Lehman on the fake punt gets all the way down to the 38-9-yard line of Elida. 
What a great play call. Yes, I didn't sir. expect that at all. I wasn't even thinking about that. And uh, a big gain for Bath, and that's that big play we were yeah, talking about. Go. That can spark something there. If they can capitalize on it now, that would be great for them. 24-yard pickup there. You can see right there, Lehman takes the, the snap. And a good run for him. He scored on a trick play in the opening half. They pick up 24 yards on that play to keep the drive going. Yeah, and I like how he covered up the football there at the end of that play. Both arms on the football, not going to turn it over. Right, Lehman and Zach Welch in the backfield. The receivers go two by two. Here comes Hale in motion. This is Hale on the sweep. And Hale cuts it up, and he gets inside the 35. And that will bring quarter number three to an end. Elida with a two-score lead. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our fourth quarter tonight is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses, our one relationship at a time, at cnbohio.com. Bath Wildcats after a trick play and a four-yard pickup. Trailing by 14, they need to score this possession. Comes Hale in motion. This is counter play, and Lehman cannot get through the tackle. Of well, a young man who's had a pretty good football game tonight, Parker Krim. Actually lost a yard back to the 36. Yeah, and they've run that play several times with Mikey Hale coming in motion and handed it to him. And this time they go with a little counter action. And Elida did their job. They stayed home, kept their assignments, and uh, Par made the play. Parker Krim is a freshman. 215 pounder has had a good football game this evening. Wildcats, third and seven. Here's Albright. Albright rolls, gets away from Krim, and is going to go down to the 39-yard line. He might have had that one sniffed out. Lost three, back to the 39. Yeah, good job. I didn't see the number by the weak side corner for Elida. Stayed home and did not uh, stay with the receiver, so Albright had nobody to throw it to. I think originally that was going to be a pass, so he has to run it. Nothing, nothing doing over there. He loses about three or four yards. So the Wildcats go to fourth and nine to keep this drive alive. It's a big play. It is certainly. And they're going to take a timeout. We're going to see which it. one called the timeout. Elida took a timeout. They realize how important this play is defensively. Back in a minute, you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Scott, I think Elida realizes the importance of getting a stop right here, hence their timeout on fourth and nine. Yeah, Mark, we were talking about at the break, too. Cody Vandermark, who was their leading receiver coming into the game for Bath, had uh, 143 yards, 12 catches. We don't see him on the field. We haven't seen much from him tonight. There's Welch to throw. Throws it deep over the middle. Hale's out there, and it bounces off his shoulder pad. And Mikey Hale says, I should have caught that one. And uh, that young man is uh, a young player. Just a freshman, and he will catch that for the next three years. Take well, a look at it again, Scott. Yeah, just an excellent throw. I mean, you can't throw it any better when it hits the receiver in the helmet. You know it was a good throw, and that's exactly what happened there. Mikey just wasn't able to hold on to it. Elida, with 10.31 to go in the game, holds on, keeps the Wildcats from getting their first down. They will take over on their own 38-yard line. And again, Mark, uh, excellent defense by Bath, and you can see offensively they, they've they got something that they can grow with. They've got a lot of young players mm -hmm. are involved, and, and they're so close, you know, to that big play. Just Jack not able to make it. Jackson Kovald alone in the backfield. Here comes man in motion. Here's the handoff, Wash. And look out. He's got the Jets going again. Amari Wash, yet another big carry, and he gets into Wildcat territory. Boy, I really like him. He's a good-looking football player. He's had two big runs tonight, one for a touchdown and then this one. And I like the cut back here. Good vision, a little stutter step in the middle to let his blocker engage. 
and then he picks up a about 10 more yards on his own. 19 yard run for Union Bank first down for Elida. Koval in the backfield this time he has with him. Brady Kirk sets up on his right hip. This will be a Brady Kirk run. And he's inside the 40 and dragging tacklers and he gets down to about Ball's the loose. 30. Ball's loose. Yep, official said he was down. And Brady Kirk gets up with a bit of a limp and heads to the sideline. Boy, Mark, that was close. I thought that ball might have come out before he went to the ground. We get a good look at it. You see the knee comes down and then the ball. So, yeah, it was a good call by the official. He was down. Veteran officiating crew, nice call. Mm -hmm. Brady Kirk got to the sideline. They're treating him for what appears to be a cramp. Warm 73 degree evening. Well, it's a little humid tonight. It too. is. Here's Wash, sweeping left. And he runs through a tackle attempt by Vinny Vendetta. Betty gets to pick up a Union Bank first down. He's got speed. I mean, he, he just gets to the outside easily there, converts the first down without really what looks like a whole lot of effort. Looks like they're going to put the football down on the 33-yard line, so a four-yard pickup, which is enough for a first down. Mark, and Amari Wash is a freshman. Yeah. Elida using a little play clock this time as it's under 10 right now. Tyler Carter's in the backfield along with Kovalt. Kovalt looks, throws. Get caught, it was on the sideline over here. This catch was by Seth Sharp. Junior, 5'11", 160 pounds. First down completion, takes the ball from the 33 to the 28. Close to a horse collar there. It was. Second and five. Carter shifts to the right side this time of Koval. And we'll get a handoff. Runs right in the middle of the Wildcat defense and fights inside and still fights. Still, still lugging him. Really strong run that time by the 5'9", 170 pound senior. And we have a Wildcat down on the field with that first down run. We're gonna watch the replay and look at the strength right there. And he just bulls through everyone. You know, that, that's just pure will, pure effort. He refused to go down, picks up about an extra 10 yards with just an absolutely great effort. It's a Union Bank first down, and we're going to break while they treat the injured Wildcat. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our touchdown side are sponsored by T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit T&D Interiors on Allentown Road. Tyshawn Davis limped off with a cramp. A lot of that this evening. Wing back run that time by Wash on first down. You know, Elitis had a number of injuries tonight. Uh, Mark, number one, Larkin Henderson's out. We haven't seen him on the sidelines. Not sure what the situation is with him. Had several guys go down with cramps. Uh, most notably, probably 55, Torrey Thomas has been out a couple times now. And, you know, you wonder as Elida 3-0, almost, you know, on the verge here of going 4-0, and yet at the end of the season they play really three of the top teams in the WBL with them. Uh, you wonder if, you know, attrition is going to eventually catch up to them or if, they, if they're able to reload here. Salina next week at Defiance week after that and powering inside the five-yard line on a big run. Coming out of that play, that's the uh, – Tyler Carter again. Well, Tyler Carter is fired up. He's got a little, yes. a little emotion there, which is good to see. I think that's what he lighted well, needed. He's not going to be taken down by a high tackle. You're going to have to get him down around the legs. Tyler and, Carter does not have a touchdown run on the air. That's why. Yeah, he, he wants to get himself in the end zone. You know, and Elida has done a nice job of mixing it up. They've had Tyler yep. Carter a couple runs, Amari yep. Wash a couple runs. They've thrown a couple passes. I really like how they're spreading the football around. Brady Kirk, Etzcorn's carried it a few times, so they have been balanced this evening. Here's Koval in motion. 
Wash trying to get to the sideline, and he runs through the first tackle, and we've got a flag. This one's coming back. I think somebody grabbed Albright. So the touchdown run will get wiped out by the penalty with 7-12 to go. Here it is again. Yeah, you can see here he's just about to make the tackle, and he gets oh. actually, tackled from behind yeah. by the defensive player. Actually grabbed Dalton Woodruff right there, and not Albright. So we're going to bring this touchdown run back. That's a spot foul in 10 yards. But again, Mark, you talk about balance with the Elida offense. They've run inside, they've run outside, they've thrown the football. So they've not only spread the football around to different players, but they've really had a good mix of plays inside, outside to the edge, and throwing the football. So they're back to the 20-yard line where it is first and goal. Carter's in the backfield with Kovalt. This is Carter running off the left tackle. And inside the 10-yard he goes. Man, he wants it. You can yes, tell. Yes, sir. He's running with a purpose. He takes a, about a 12-yard gain to the eight. And what will be the ninth play of this drive coming up? This has been a drive of a big boy football. One, one completed pass and a bunch of runs. That pass was a short completion of just five yards. Tyler Carter again lowers his head inside the five before the Wildcats stand him up. He's still fighting. He gets down <laughs> to about the three yard line. Yes, he is. I think Coach Harmon would like to reward him, allow him to get it into the end zone if he can. He's really done a good job running the ball in this series. That he has. You know, and the other thing, Mark, is this, this series has really used up a lot of clock. That is correct. They have burned more than five minutes, almost five and a half minutes as they head into this particular play. And they're not in any hurry. Koval in the backfield alone. This is Etzcorn. Etzcorn runs through one tackle and dives down to about the two, but it's going to be short. Well, and he, he, Etzcorn knew it. He, he had a chance to get in the end zone there. He just couldn't quite keep his footing. Again, it's a little slick here just after the do, and you see kind of the feet give out. Well, the football is on the two-yard line, and I think Coach Harmon is going to let the clock run down, the play clock run down, and then call timeout. Choice of going for two or using that good field goal kicker that he's had this evening in Grant Hardeman. Well, and Grant Hardeman's perfect on the year. So it's almost course, a given. You know what? If he uh, if he takes the five-yard penalty for delay a game, it actually improves the angle a little bit on his kick, too. So that, Nope, he's going to call timeout. 5.01 to go in the football game. Elida takes their second timeout of the second half. You're watching high school football at WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency, agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. 5.01 to go. Coach Harmer with a decision to make when this game comes to an end. We'll have our post-game interview and also present our Stally Hustle Award winner tonight. Yeah, and I think you got a, a, an opportunity for success either way here if you're Coach Harmon. You go for it, put the score on the board, end the game, basically or you, you know, give your field goal kicker an opportunity, and it looks to me like he's yeah, going to go for he's it. He's going to go for it. He's got Koval in the game along with Tyler Carter. They need two. I think you give it to Tyler Carter. Koval's going to go under center. That's going in motion. Koval wants to run it, and the Wildcats get him. You know, that defense has held pretty much all night long, Scott. I know they've given up 24, but they've actually played pretty well this evening considering some of the positions they've been in. Yeah, I think so, too. I agree with you completely. I think there was a little miscommunication here on this play. It looked like uh, looks like Jackson Kovalt was extending the football to hand it off to Tyler Carter, and, and Carter was already in the hole. So not sure if that was the play design or not. 
So math takes over, under five minutes to go. They have all three of their timeouts, but they trail by a pair of scores, and they're back on their own three-yard line. Well, and they've been here, it seems like, <laughs> most of the night. Yeah, that it does. They've, uh, they've started, I think, four or five drives in inside of their own five-yard line. And uh, that's tough to score points when you start that deep. Zach Welch in the backfield. He's got Skyler Lehman beside him. And we get a flag for delay a game. Half the distance to the goal line type penalty. Well, that's going to be about a foot and a half. <laughs> Not very much. See what uh, the Wildcats come up with. They're going to stay with whatever the call was a moment ago. Lehman. And Skyder Lehman will pick up maybe three as he gets to the four-yard line. You know, that's tough. You're almost forced to run in that situation. you got to run a play that's straight ahead because you can't risk the safety. But at the same time, Elida knows that. So they really had uh, loaded up the box there. He, wasn't, he, he did a pretty good job just to get a little breathing room there, get it out to about the four-yard line. Second and nine. This time, shotgun trips right, two receivers left for Welsh. And he throws and missed his man. Did somebody get a hand on that? It sort of looked funny right around the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at it again. Not sure one of those big fellows up front didn't get a hand on it. Maybe, I'm not sure whether Number 12, Keaton Hawkey got a hand on it or not. It certainly didn't come out of the quarterback uh, hand the way you would think it would from Welsh. So it's third and nine now from their own four. And we go trips right, two receivers left again. They need some positive yard yardage here. He's gonna be punting from the back of his own end zone. Well, it's a quick pass and goes through his receiver's hands and falls incomplete. Pass was high with a little bit of steam on it. Then we go to fourth down from their own four. Well, Mark, we've had several players go down with cramps, mm. and we've had uh, several balls that have gone through the hands of receivers. I, I feel like it, it may be just a little slick out there right now because of the kind of the change in the weather. It's kind of uh, coming into this humid uh, evening, humid night, and it's, it's, there's a little moisture out there. Welsh will punt this one away and does so. He drives Etzcorn back to the 34-yard line. Etzcorn's up the sideline. He's got a flag behind the play on this one. Etzcorn's inside the 10 to about the 6, but I'm thinking this is coming back. Yeah, it's got to be a block in the back. That's the only thing that there could have been in the area that he threw the flag. Elida will get the football back with exactly four minutes to go. It's a good look at David Etzcorn, 5'11", 180 pound junior. We had a chance to talk at halftime to the new principal here at Elida, Justin Ferks. How much he enjoys this new school opportunity as the principal here at Elida High School. Yeah, he loves being back in the area, and yeah. we, we, we love having him back in the area, to be honest with you. I, I, tried, did, I tried to talk well, him into refereeing basketball again. and uh, I didn't realize that it had been seven years since he had not officiated, but he was always one of my favorites is when we telecast games. So he did a yeah. great job. We got a Wildcat down on the field with exactly four minutes to go. Another cramp situation. Well, I guess he's up, and... Well, I think we'll stay here. Nobody from the sideline, Scott, came over to treat him, so I think he can stay in the game. Or did they call timeout to get him off the field? I'm not sure. It is Albright, 6'3", 205-pound senior. Yeah, he was just taking a break back there for a little bit. He's been uh, working pretty hard all night long. As a lot of guys have this evening. Football will be on the Wildcat 48-yard line. Elida has started possessions many, many times in Wildcat territory this evening. That punt was about 44 yards, but uh, counting the penalty. 
You know, there's been more cramping up tonight than I've yeah. seen in, in a long time at any football game, and it's really not as hot as it's been in the first couple weeks. Sir Jackson Kovald, who's been filling in for Larkin Henderson this evening. This is Amari Wash on the corner. Cuts back inside, and the ball's loose, and he runs it down. <laughs> How about that play? A saving tackle by Mikey Hale. Oh, my. When it goes your way, it goes your way. It goes your way. Amari Wash, it's been going his way all night. You see, and, and, and I like here how, how he pops the ball out, puts a little backspin on it so it pops up right to him, <laughs> and he gets another 15 yards after the uh, after the fumble recovery. Here comes a 42-yard run and a Union Bank first down. Never lost a step, he did he? He just kept right on going. Right on going. Didn't pout, didn't give up, just went and got the football and made four positive yards out of it. I tell you, for a freshman, he is uh, he is a highlight reel for sure. I don't know what he does in the spring. Yeah, I play shortstop. And guess who gets into the end zone? After multiple efforts, Tyler Carter powers in from the six-yard line, and Elida has put this one away. Yeah, and that's his first touchdown on the year. I'm excited for him because he's really worked hard all night long, and he finally gets rewarded with the touchdown. So just a two-play drive to go 48 yards. Here comes Hardeman in for yet another PAT attempt. That took 32 seconds to run those two plays off. Here's Hardeman. And he might have kicked that one into the Elida Fieldhouse. He really got a hold of that one. Elida, 31, bath 10. You're watching high school football on WOSN. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the United Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And we get a TD interior touchdown run by Tyler Carter, and it pushes the lead to 31-10. Mark, all this Stocker advertising is reminding me that, you know, it's time for my teeth cleaning. He, he's <laughs> my dentist, and, you know, it's time. But, you know, on the scoreboard, Mark, 31-10, it looks like it's yeah. really been a lopsided, one-sided game. But to be honest with you, I feel like, Bath has played really well, defensively especially, and uh, just a few big plays have gone Elida's way, and they've made the big plays at the time yeah. they needed to, and it, it shows on the scoreboard. And, and perhaps a few big plays that Bath could have made that didn't go their way too. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're close, just haven't quite been able to get over the, the hump. We're going to flag down on this one on the, uh, the return. When I come back early in the game, too, where, you know, there was a, the fumble, Bath was able to recover the fumble, which kept the light out of the end zone, and then they, they weren't able to capitalize on that. So I think they've had some opportunities, you, you, as you said. They just haven't been able to capitalize on those to uh, keep this game closer. That penalty actually goes against Elida. Let's see what the call is. Face mask is the call. Thank you guys in the truck. So Bath will start on their own 46-yard line. They trail by 21, and we're 319 from ending this one. This is Hale. Hale with a quick burst, gets about four yards to the 50-yard line. Clock stays running. You know, I like Bath's grit. They've continued to fight throughout the entirety of this game. They haven't given up, haven't cashed it in. They continue to, to, to give effort. And I like to see that. But, you know, Elida, Elida's got some playmakers. They do. They, 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 they have a variety of weapons, receivers, running backs. We've seen a whole slew of running backs tonight, and, and they've all done well. And then second-team quarterback comes in and, and has not missed a beat. Hale again. This time he's going to go down right at the 50. And you've talked a couple of times this evening about the, the young Bath team. A quick scan through their roster shows me just seven seniors, and uh, my addition skills aren't good, and I did that very quickly between plays, but uh, certainly not many on this roster, and a lot of these guys are coming back. Yeah, which bodes well for them because, you know, defense is where it all starts. They've got a good defensive unit. If they can just, you know, put some things together offensively, um, you know, and become more of a balanced team, I, I, I think there's a, the sky is the limit for improvement for them over the next year or two years. They have OG next week, go to Salina, host Defiance. Those two are the next three are at home. Hale trying to get wide and cannot, runs into that scorn. And another guy who's had a pretty good game on the interior and 
That, of course, is Parker Krim. Yeah, he has, no question about it. And he's only a freshman as well. Yep. He's 6'2", 215 pounds, and you can see he's got speed, he's got size, and he's got determination, makes a great play right there. Lost a couple back to their own 48-yard line. Fourth and eight Wildcats. Welsh looking to his coach on the sideline to see what the play call is going to be. And they might just run this clock down and – I think Rindell, Coach Rindell is talking to the official on his side of the field. And one would expect a timeout coming yet. And there it is as the play clock was running down. 69 seconds to go in this one. Bath takes a timeout. We're going to break also. Back in a moment, you're watching high school football on WSN. Bath's going to go for it on fourth and eight. Zach Welsh going to step up. He's got a guy open deep. He's got Albright out there. It's caught. No, oh. it's not. It goes right oh. through Albright's hands. I thought he had that one. The ball wow. falls incomplete, and Elida will take over on downs. Well, Mark, that's the second time we've seen a fourth down long pass play go in and out of a receiver's hands with an opportunity for a huge play here. He put this in a good spot, did the young quarterback. Yeah, and, you know, Coach Reindell said coming into this game that one of the keys to the game was, you know, create big plays and put the ball in the end zone. We've had opportunities to score, but we haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone, and that's kind of been the case tonight. They've moved the football. They've had opportunities. They just not have been able to put it in the end zone. So Elida will take over with a minute and two remaining on the Wildcat 48. And one would think they're going to head to the victory formation. Jackson Kovalt will go up under center and take a snap. And we'll do that one more time, and this one will come to an end. Well, Elida's going to go to 4-0. and That is a fact. Which, um, you know, puts him right at the top of the WBL. And got to be feeling good about the way they're playing football right now. Here's that snap we need to wrap this one up. And you are correct. Elida will take a 31-10 victory over the Bath Wildcats. Elida will go to 4-0 on the season. They will be 3-0 in the Western Buckeye League, and they will do so with a trip coming up to actually Salina coming here next week. The Bath Wildcats will drop to 0-4, 0-3, and they will have Ottawa Glandorf at home for their next contact contest as well. 31-10 Elida, post-game show coming up. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. If you We're back at Crash Stadium here in Elida down. where the Bulldogs have taken a 31-10 win over the Bath Wildcats. We've got Coach Harmon with you and your assistant coach. Jack Harmon. All right, Jack, good to see you here. You have a good evening, son? You did, all right. Coach, a little bit spotty game, a rough in and out, in and out, but one thing we're sure your defense played well all night. Yeah, you know, defense played lights out. You know, we had some guys going down with cramps, and we had some other guys step up in some key situations that haven't had a lot of reps throughout the season. So, you know, credit to those guys, you know, defensive staff for coaching those guys up. They did a great job. Coach, you used multiple different guys carrying the football tonight, and it seems like every time it was a different back, but you got a lot of guys who can carry the mail. Yeah, we got a lot of guys who work extremely hard. You know, the weight room showed from the summer. But, you know, Amari Wash, you know, freshman, you know, he hasn't got his number called a lot of times on offense. But, you know, he stepped up, delivered us a long touchdown, and he played a great game stepping up. Coach, you lost your quarterback early, Larkin Henderson, but Jackson Koval came in and played very, very well. Yeah, you know, we responded to adversity well. You know, he went out, got a little ding, but, you know, Jackson Kovalt has a lot of experience at quarterback. You know, he works his butt off every day. So we'll have to go reevaluate moving forward and see where we're going to go from here. All right, Coach, you're 4-0, 3-0 in conference play. You're off to a good start. Got to feel good about your season approaching the halfway point. Yeah, you know, our kids have battled. You know, like I said, we faced some adversity. But, you know, we've had some fast starts in some football games. That was not the case tonight. You know, our guys gutted out a tough win against a physical, well-coached bath football team. You know, I thought they played extremely well on both sides, and they put us in some binds, you know. But our kids rose to the occasion and, you know, ultimately came out with victory. Coach Kyle Harmon, his team takes a 31-10 victory tonight over the Bath Wildcats. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for having me. All right, let's bring Scott Nurse in here right now. Scott, the first thing we have to do is go to our Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. 
we talked about multiple different people from Elida. We decided to go with Jackson Covo. Yeah, it was a tough choice because, you know, we talked about Tyler Carter with his tough running. Amari Walsh had some spark that really sparked the Elida offense. But ultimately, I thought Jackson Covo came in, you know, when Larkin Henderson went down with an injury in the second quarter. He stepped in, played really well, never missed a beat, had several key runs, threw the ball well, and just led his team to kind of from a from a tie game to the good win that they had, 31-10. Let's, let's talk about the Bath Wildcats just a moment because their defense played well throughout the football game, put in bad positions many times, and their offense was just a play or two here away from having a pretty good game themselves. Yeah, as I said, I feel really good about their defense. They, they played well. They have had played well. I've seen them a couple times this year. Offensively, they're just struggling to find that, that chemistry to make things work, and it'll come. Scott Nurse's comments, we appreciate that. We want to thank the athletic director here, Mr. Dave Evans. We want to thank our crew. That's director Wayne Getz, our replay, Derek Henry, our camera people tonight, Jacob O'Neill, Seth Hagemeyer, Marshall Jordan. We want to thank you for watching. Elida goes to 4-0 on the conference on the season, 3-0 in the conference with a 31-10 win over the Bath Wildcats. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.